Outside the walls lie three suburbs. Upe is now Tenkara, Yair Ilie is now Bandar Hile, and Saba is now known as Bungaraya. The most important of these suburbs is Upe because of its commercial activity. When the British took command in 1795, Malacca became an important administrative center. In 1807, William Farquhar, a British resident in Malacca, gathered hundreds of highly paid workers to take down the A. Formosa fort because the fort was seen as a threat if ever Malacca were to be recaptured by the Dutch. However, bringing down the fort manually was no easy feat. Many died, many fell sick, and many deserted the job. Finally, after years of trying, Farquhar instructed the fort to be demolished by explosives. On the 4th of November 2001, an upgrading project started in and around Dataran Palawan. The excavation work has led to the discovery of the ruins of Santiago's control tower buried under layers of earth and blocks of squared laterite rocks. Archaeologists and historians were called to the site to confirm the findings and immediately they rendered the architectural wall similar to the gateway of the Porta de Santiago at St. Paul's Church. The ruins of St. Paul's Church stands at the summit of St. Paul's Hill near the remains of Porta de Santiago access gate. The site was originally occupied by the Chapel of the Annunciation. The church is renowned as the place where the body of St. Francis Xavier, the pioneering Catholic missionary of Southeast Asia, was laid to rest for a period of eight months after his death. The open grave in the church, now covered by a wire mesh, marks the place of Xavier's temporary burial. Xavier had been an active missionary in the Malaku region of Indonesia from 1546 to 1547. Xavier visited Malacca five times between September 1545 and May 1552. Malacca has a special place, uh, or has holds a special place for St. Francis Xavier. He's known as uh, the Apostle of the East, and he used Malacca, he came to Malacca a couple of times, and he actually used Malacca as one of his, his uh, points to try and make it to China. His dream was to preach Christianity in China, but unfortunately, St. Francis Xavier uh, fell sick on the island of Sanchuang, 14 kilometers off the coast of present-day uh, Guangdong. And he never made it to mainland China because he died. He passed away on, on, on the island. And his body was later brought back to Malacca, interred up on the hill in uh, St. Paul's Hill, and later br brought back to Goa, where his incorruptible body still lies in Goa. Xavier also translated the catechism into Malay text and helped establish several Catholic convent schools. Perhaps the most famous story about St. Francis Xavier was when he dropped his rosary into the sea while seated on a rock by the shore, deep in prayers. When Xavier cried for forgiveness, a crab emerged from the water, and with it was his rosary. Xavier blessed the crab with the sign of the cross. Today, the uncommon class of local crab, with a cross mark on its shell, is said to be the progeny of the crab blessed by St. Francis Xavier hundreds of years ago. Uh, there's also a very uh, uh, humorous story, a side to St. Francis Xavier, saying that when he wanted to preach, uh, some of the people had rejected him. So he said that he'll go and preach to the animals, and he actually went out and preached to the fish. And it's, it was said that a lot of fish gathered to hear him preach. It's something very uh, unique and Humorous. <laughs>
Cristal is the Malaccan Portuguese's very own language. It is a language that has evolved for over five centuries. The Cristal language, like others, has its share of idioms, proverbs, and riddles. Though deficient in grammar and static in growth, the Cristal language has been used as a medium of writing in mostly letters and songs. Another interesting fact is that the Portuguese language has contributed and enriched the Malay language by at least 1,400 words. Malay language and the Portuguese language, there are a lot of similarities in terms of words used. If you look at the Bahasa Malaysia, a lot of the words are all uh, uh, words derived from different languages, Arabic, Sanskrit, uh, some English, and uh, the Portuguese contributing, contributing about 1,000 over, 1,400 over, like a word. Besides, uh, besides this, that there are also controversy of words that has been recently uh, come out, came out in the newspaper. The words alama, ayoyo. Of course, uh, uh, we corrected it and said that it is not, it is not of Portuguese origin, alama or ayoyo. So there were, there were debate within the community. So we thought that it was necessary. That's why uh, in the media we made a clarification that the ayoyo and alama is not a Portuguese word. Uh, we normally say it is uh, my details, the mother of God, in response of uh, uh, oh my God, or alama. In Malay, the Malay is alama. Malaccan Portuguese music is called the Branho. This unique artistic form dates back to the earliest Portuguese era of the 13th century. The Branho, differing in rhythm, music and lyrics, is said to be predominantly for the young and energetic couples. The Portuguese cultural group presents many traditional songs and dances, and it is often seen in many of Malaysian cultural and festive events. This song and dance is conducted by Manuel Lazarou, or better known as Papa Joe. Formed in 1973 with 15 members, the dancers and musicians are now a symbol of the Malaccan Portuguese and will continue to represent the society's tradition, culture, and arts. <laughs> The most popular song of the Branho is the jinkle, or jinkling nona, fast in tempo, and can be performed with the aid of basic instruments such as the drum. Jinkling nona started many years ago in Malacca. <clears throat> it started with, uh, without steps. When the Portuguese were here, they were happy, in a happy mood, and they were enjoying themselves. They were hit, hitting teens or whatever they can get to make the sound. And then slowly, later on, the steps were formed. And they started doing the jingli nona. The, the words were there, and the pantones were there. So they started singing. Until today, they are singing the jingli nona. And they are dancing the jogi lamba in Malay. But in Portuguese, it's called the branho. Predominantly Roman Catholics by faith, like many other Christians in the world, Christmas is joyfully celebrated, beginning with the Midnight Mass on the eve of Christmas Day. During Mass, it's estimated that approximately 7,000 people congregate in the square every year, most attending Mass while others waiting for the midnight celebration. A hug, a peck on the cheek, and a Christmas wish greets everyone at the end of Mass. In the meantime, homeowners are busy preparing the feast for their loved ones. The curry davil is the center of all delicacies, followed by the Christmas pie. 
Portuguese food, though spicy, is not necessarily fiery hot. However, tonight, by 10.30 p.m., the square was filled by approximately 15,000 people of all races. Artificial snow, retailing at 10 ringgit for three cans, is the hottest item on sale. The artificial snow is a non-toxic mixture of water and soap. With its sweet smell of lavender filling the air, the snow is being abundantly sprayed and everyone is getting their fair share. By 11 p.m., there's approximately 20,000 people in the square, with another 10,000 waiting to enter. Suddenly, Malacca is snowing. The amount of artificial snow leaves 20,000 people gasping for air while wishing each other Merry Christmas. Five centuries of cultural integration between the Iberian and indigenous communities has produced layers of identical cultures. Malaccan Portuguese can take pride in the knowledge that they have played a role in influencing the national culture. In time, perhaps, we will discover that there may still be areas of national integration where this unique Malaysian race, with their resilience and survival instincts, can contribute towards a greater understanding of living in Malaysia. Peter Gomez realizes that there are no special privileges for being a Portuguese or a leader of the community. But one thing is certain, his ancestors came to Malacca to create a civilization through the support they found in beliefs, myths, and methods of becoming a simple population. Of mixed parentage in the majority, lost in the vast tropics, isolated in time, and different from the other European nations. The Malaysian government has extended assistance to the Malaccan Portuguese community to continue perpetuating their traditions, music, language, and cultural heritage. Living in an environment of differing cultures, the Malaccan Portuguese are unique to the state and country. Being the smallest community in a large multicultural society, the Portuguese descendants had influenced the Malay language, played a role in the evolution of the local music, contributed to the local cuisine, enriched local cottage industries. Today, Malacca draws more than six million tourists from around the world. Yet the Malaccan Portuguese community continues to preserve their centuries-old traditions and customs. The Malaccan Portuguese community appears to have completed its metamorphism. The homogeneity, the simplicity, the Malaccan Portuguese way of life. Up next, a massive non-military operation to create the world's largest artificial reef, a year-long project of mind-blowing proportions. The sinking of an aircraft carrier, next.